Thank you. Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee and Ogura Sensei for inviting me to this meeting. Here are my financial disclosures. In this presentation, I'm going to talk on vitriform lesion in pachycoroid eyes and unusual manifestations of pachycoroid neovasculopathy. First, let me show you a typical case of vitriform lesion in an eye with pachycoroid. You can see yellowish lesion in the fundus, hyperautofluorescence on fundus autofluorescence image, early broad fluorescence and weight standing on the fluorescent angiogram, and homogeneous hyperreflective materials in the subretinal space on OCT. In addition, thickened choroid, pachybacillus, small PD, RP changes on OCT, and choroidal hyperpermeability on ICGA are observed, which is a fit for the pachycoroid description. Fellow eye has a typical CSC region with pigment epithelial detachment, but no vitriform lesion. Over 18 months, vitriform lesion has been regressed to leave macular atrophy. Accumulations of yellowish subretinal material can occur in a variety of macular disorders, which has been referred to generically as a vitriform lesion. Vitriform lesions frequently accompanied by drusen and AMD, suggestive of a common pathogenic mechanism associated with altered function of the RP photoreceptor complex. Patients who do not have uh, other fundoscopic abnormalities may be diagnosed with adult onset phobia macular vitreliform dystrophy. Other conditions include VMT, ERM, CSC, and toxic macropathies. Vitreliform lesion is composed of pigment granules of RP origin and photoreceptor outer segment debris. They may be end products of a specific RP stress response to an unclarified insult impairing photoreceptor outer segment turnover. Then we may be able to postulate an association between vitreliform lesion and pachycoroid. Previously, a few studies have shown choroidal thickening in this condition. Another yellowish region frequently seen in pachycoroid is pachydrusen, which also represents deposits of extracellular debris resulting from RP brook dysfunction. We may postulate that two conditions share a common pathogenic mechanism mediated by pachycoroid, although the location of deposition is different. Let's take a look at some cases with vitreliform lesion and pachycoroid and associated features. In this case, vitreliform lesion is detected overlying a retinal PED. Intraretinal hyperrefractive foci is also seen. In previous studies conducted on Caucasian, most PED were drusenoid or associated with non-neovascular AMD. On the contrary, PED in this case has no sign of AMD and may represent a variant of CSC associated with pachycoroid. In this particular case, vitreliform lesion regressed soon after resolution of the long-standing pigment epithelial detachment, suggesting involvement of a common pathogenic mechanism. In this case, focal RP elevation, so-called RP bump, is detected just below the vitreliform lesion. Again, you can see hyperrefractive foci. Hyperrefractive foci and RP bump are frequent accompanying findings in previous studies. RP bump represents RP hyperplasia consisting of pigment radon RP cells and macrophages, being intensely refractive on near infrared image and frequently accompanied by hyperrefractive foci. It is not disease specific and a common background feature of a pachycoroid along with small pigment epithelial detachment and pachydrusen. Hyperrefractive foci are associated with vitreliform lesion in 10 to 50 percent. Histologic evaluation showed that they correspond to cells of RP origin that are similar to those found in vitreliform lesions. Thus, the nature of hyperrefractive foci is migration of RP cells. 
Another associated feature in our cases was subretinal fluid, which might be caused by vitreoruptive materials or RP pump dysfunction. Regression of vitreiform lesion results in a wide range of atrophic changes of RP and outer retinal layers on OCT. The abnormalities are various in the intensities and integrities of outer retinal layers as well as in the extent. At this stage, it is difficult to make a correct diagnosis. I'll move on to the next topic, unusual presentations of pachycoroid neovasculopathy that may cause diagnostic and therapeutic challenges. Pachycoroid neovasculopathy is a type of neovascularization associated with pachycoroid typically presenting with a shallow irregular PED on OCT and tangled vascular network on OCT angiogram. Diagnosis of PMV is limited to the cases without certain polypoidal lesions on ICG angiogram. However, there is still controversy over this point. Pachycoroid neovasculopathy may be silent or accompany subretinal fluids and may progress to the development of polypoidal lesion. Here you can see a weird feature that may be associated with pachycoroid neurovasculopathy. Is this just some optically empty space due to loss of out retina and thinning of RP induced by silent PMV or some other pachycoroid related changes such as pachycoroid pigment failopathy? Or serous detachment caused by PMV with low activity or chronic central serous chorioretinopathy? Over seven years of follow-up period, the region have been relatively stable. At some time point, the height increased and decreased again after anti-VGF injections. This might evidence that PMB with low activity contributed to the SRF correction at that time. In this case, you can see subretinal hyperrefractive material which responded well to anti-VGF treatment. I think this is somewhat unusual manifestation for pachycoroid neovasculopathy. In summary, RP stress response to some inserts caused by pachycoroid may impair photoreceptor outer segment turnover, inducing vitreiform lesion formation. High index of suspicion is required to make a correct diagnosis, in particular small sized lesion. In pachycoroid eyes, the possibility of a silent or low-activity pachycoroid neovasculopathy, pachycoroid-related atrophy, and non-neovascular subretinal fluid causes diagnostic and therapeutic challenges. Thank you for your attention.